was going, he never paused to think about which way they should run. As they rounded the next corner, Minho attempted to speak. Between heaving breaths, he gasped. I just saw, the dive move you did, back there, gave me an idea. We only have to last, a little while longer. Thomas didn't bother wasting his own breath on questions, he just kept running. Following Minho, without having to look behind him, he knew the grievers were gaining ground at an alarming rate. Every inch of his body hurt, inside and out, his limbs cried for him to quit running. But he ran on, hoped his heart didn't quit pumping. A few turns later, Thomas saw something ahead of them that didn't register with his brain. It seemed wrong and the faint light emanating from their pursuers made the oddity up ahead all the more apparent. The corridor didn't end in another stone wall. It ended in blackness. Thomas narrowed his eyes as they ran toward the wall of darkness, trying to comprehend what they were approaching. Stars. It was a strange and unsettling sight. Like he was standing at the edge of the universe, and for a brief moment he was overcome by vertigo, his knees weakening before he steadied himself. Dawn was beginning to make its mark. The sky seeming to have lightened considerably even in the last minute or so. Just as the first griever's arm extended out to nip at them, Minho and Thomas dove in opposite directions. Each toward one of the outer walls of the corridor. The tactic had worked for Thomas earlier, and judging by the horrible screeching sound that escaped the first griever, it had worked again. The monster flew off the edge of the cliff. Oddly, its battle cry cut off sharply instead of fading as it plummeted to the depths beyond. Thomas landed against the wall and spun just in time to see the second creature tumble over the edge, not able to stop itself. The third one planted a heavily spiked arm into the stone. But its momentum was too much. The nerve-grinding squeal of the spike cutting through the ground sent a shiver up Thomas's spine, though a second later the griever tumbled into the abyss. Again, neither of them made a sound as they fell, as if they disappeared instead of falling. The fourth and final approaching creature was able to stop in time, teetering on the very edge of the cliff. A spike and a claw holding it in place. Instinctively Thomas knew what he had to do. Looking to Minho, he nodded, then turned. Both boys ran in at the griever and jumped feet first at the creature. Kicking out at the last second with every waning bit of strength. They both connected, sending the last monster plummeting to its death. Thomas quickly scrambled to the edge of the abyss, poking his head over to see the falling grievers. But impossibly, they were gone, not even a sign of them in the emptiness that stretched below. Nothing. His mind couldn't process the thought of where the cliff led or what had happened to the terrible creatures. His last ounce of strength disappeared, and he curled into a ball on the ground. Then... Finally, came the tears, enraged cries had ended as they fell from the cliff, and how he hadn't been able to see them plummeting to their deaths. There was something very strange and unsettling about it. Seems like they disappeared or something after they went over the edge. Yeah, that was kinda psycho. Couple of gladers had a theory that other things had disappeared, but we proved him wrong. Look, Thomas watched as Minho tossed a rock over the cliff, then followed its path with his eyes. Down and down it went, not leaving his sight until it grew too small to see. He turned back toward Minho. How does that prove them wrong? Minho shrugged. Well, the rock didn't disappear, now. Did it? Then what do you think happened? There was something significant here, Thomas could feel it. Minho shrugged again. Maybe they're magic. My head hurts too much to think about it. With a jolt, all thoughts of the cliff were forgotten. Thomas. Remembered Albie. We have to get back. Straining, he forced himself to get to his feet. Gotta get Albie off the wall. Seeing the look of confusion on Minho's face. He quickly explained what he'd done with the ropes of Ivy. Minho looked down, his eyes dejected. 
No way he's still alive. Thomas refused to believe it. 